today the video deals with a very long putt and we'll call it to jump putt or not to jump putt that is the question uh, with me today uh, I have three other of the Discraft professional players uh, to my immediate right is the current uh, amateur world champion just turned pro Paul Uliberry from Arizona standing next to him Discraft pro Mike Milne Arizona also known as the Mill Dog uh, and to my far right is the 1999 World Professional Disc Golf Champion, Ron Russell from uh, Florida. Uh, we have specifically selected this group because the two guys in the center are jump putters and the two guys on the outside are not. So we're showing you different approaches to the same sort of shot. What we're giving you is a shot roughly 100 feet away. We are at a spot where our drive has landed a basket is a hundred feet in this direction and right behind the basket there is a river or a pond or whatever that body of water might be seeing as I'm the oldest guy here uh, I will start most great pros have such a superb wrist they can snap putt jump putt from a hundred feet I can't putt outside of 30 feet outside of that I throw and what I do is I use my favorite up shooting disc which is a disc craft rattler rattler is not a beveled edge disc it actually is a disc that looks a lot like a beach frisbee except it flies so much better and in my opinion it is the world's finest disc for this shot and what I do is I throw a shot which goes out stalls and drops back down straight that allows me the opportunity to throw it pretty hard and take a risk of it going in without much risk of it going in the water behind it okay uh, probably most folks that are not top players would be far better served to throw a shot like I do because your jump putt isn't there yet so the throw that I'm taking here is not a putt it is a throw and in large part is similar to an air bounce like you would find in the sport of freestyle. And to throw an air bounce, you make the nose of the disc, that is the leading edge, go slightly forward. It spins like crazy, goes up forward, and then drops straight down. Paul, you're a jump putter. Tell us about that. Well, I like to use the Discraft Candy Z magnet for longer putts or shorter putts. I don't like to switch it up a lot. They're pretty understable. Usually I like to throw a ante and let it float, float and give it a chance at running it, but leave it short if I can too from this, from this distance. Okay. Why does your wrist produce a hundred foot snap and mine doesn't? I practice a lot. I don't know. I guess uh, everybody has a different snap, you know. Some people have different styles. I, I like to I, get, I like to snap it. Okay. And is this a shot you jump on? Yes. Yeah, I like to jump putt this. To tell us how you do that. What? How do you set up for a jump putt? How do you do it? Show us in slow motion the the form. Well, it depends. If it's the uh, if it's windy, I'm gonna do a straddle jump putt, and I'll just I'll set up like that, put it like this, and I'll try and keep it high, and so when it gets to the basket, it'll slide right in, short of the basket, or have a chance to go. If it's not windy, I'm gonna set up like this and straight jump on it. Okay, so Mill Dog, you're up. Talk, talk, talk to us about uh, this shot. The thing about jump putting and throwing, the difference between the two is that when you're throwing, you're standing sideways with your head turned. You're lining your shoulders up to the basket and you're trying to keep that alignment going. With a jump putt, because I jump putt and I'm facing forward to the basket, what I get in my visualization is I use what's called medium range and long range targets to my to my throw so that rather than just looking at the basket and trying to, to aim a shot at the basket, I look at stuff in the path of the shot and I say, okay, well my disc has got to go over that little clump, clump of grass that's on the right side and it's going to heal back in and that's going to make me a little more accurate. So I use what's called medium or long range targets to also line up my shots. And of course I use regular hard magnets which is my favorite disc. It's what I putt with, it's what I use my jump putt with, so and that's where I come from.
Okay, so Ron Russell, here we are, 100 feet or so from the basket. Tell us what you do with this shot. It's like a tough putt. Uh, what I do, my whole strategy to the way I develop my putt is, I guess, my own, uh, not too many people stand perpendicular, you know, sideways to the basket. But my whole idea is, as long as I don't open my shoulder, I shouldn't miss right. So I, I try to put an Anheuser on it the whole way, and I'm not handcuffed, is what I call it, when people stand forward when they're putting it. They didn't used to make these long putts, of course, they've just now, this jump putt has remedied that whole situation from being handcuffed and being limited to long distance putts. Well, that was my strategy before this jump putt came out. I developed my style to where I can make a 30 foot putt, you know, go in from with a slight Anheuser so that it flattens out right when it hits the, the center. And then also I can make these long putts as well. All I have to do is widen my stance so I can get a little bit more forward motion going. Okay. Now, now Ron, clearly your wrist is strong enough to allow you to jump putt as well as anybody. Right. Is it just a function that you're so good at what you've developed before, you don't mess with the jump putt? Exactly. If it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm not about to change my putting style now. It's been so successful in the years for me. Okay. And of course, you are well known as one of the world's best putters. Thank you. <laughs> you, you could deny it. No. <laughs> so uh, so what disc do you, uh, do you putt with? I use the Discraft Magnet. These are my old dogs, uh, first runs. I've had them for most of my career. I had two other discs, as you know. I procured both of them, but from you, so. I think you still owe me for those, don't you? <laughs> what is that, 10 bucks a piece? I don't, I don't remember, okay. Including interest from how many years ago? Right. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so a term that both you and Paul use, and it may not be obvious to everyone uh, listening to this video, is an Annie or an Anheuser. Right. A typical disc is not designed to fly absolutely straight. In fact, it's the rare shot with a golf disc that goes absolutely straight. The a typical golf disc goes out and it will fade to a natural direction. That natural fade is called a hyzer. So if you throw right-handed backhand, which is clockwise uh, spin, then it falls off to the left. If you throw left-handed backhand or right-handed forehand, it's a counterclockwise spin and the natural hyzer falls to the right. So what you guys are talking about is forcing a disc over, taking the wing of the disc and snapping it up slightly on release. So rather than going straight and falling to the right, it actually starts out, fades, and then comes back. I try to plan it to where it's getting just as it's getting flat, it hits the sweet spot. So it doesn't go too far. So it, it requires a little more touch, you know, as far as trying to come in with the hyzer putt for a righty. You know, it requires more touch to leave it within a 20 foot area behind the basket if I miss. Okay. Which we don't worry about. Now, now Ron, as we know, you uh, have toured more than any other disc golfer in the history of the sport. You were on the road for 10 years now, Seth? Right. 10 years. Yeah, so 10 years. so probably more people from more parts of the world have seen you than probably any other golfer. Just because you were there so long traveling to every major tournament in whatever land it was held. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen you have wondered this about your putting. How is it that you set up in an instant, don't appear to even look at the basket, then throw it in? Well, that's the way. How I, do you do that? that the, that's just the way I practiced uh, my putting. When I don't try not to do anything different when I'm practicing than I would do in a tournament, or vice versa. So that's just the way I would practice. I never use more than two putters when I practice, uh, just because it takes. If you use five, ten putters when you're practicing, it takes the importance off each putt. Well, I got three, four, five more chances. So each one is more is just is equally important to me in my opinion. So you know, I show us show us your your setup and your shot. Okay. Well, all I really need to do because of muscle memory is make my stance correct. As long as I'm 
I kind of look right. at the but pole. But the basket's the bottom over there. The pole. You're not look even at the facing. bottom of the pole. You're right. facing over here. Well, the I basket's glanced, over there. Okay. I already glanced at the bottom of the pole, so okay. I know where it's at. Right. And that's all I need to do is get my foot in the right position. Now I stand like with almost my back to the basket. Yes. And now I'm just trying to relax and get ready to get some power, depending on the distance, this long putt. And uh, when I practice, I, you know, as long as I'm shaking hands with the pole when I release, all I have to worry about is the distance, usually, because the muscle memory takes over. As long as I don't let my head into it, that first look at the basket is, is the one. So there's no reason to stand over it, in my opinion, and, you know, try and stare it down or, you know, it just gives you more time to miss. So thank you once again for attending the DISPRAP Pro Clinic. Uh, your test will be coming, so you have about a thousand hours of practice until you're ready for it.